This video is meant to act as a simple guide to making quiche. It's definitely not the end all be all, but I think it's a pretty effective way to think about and cook quiche. Quiche being the savory French tart that we all know and love. All right, so we're not going to get into specifics with the recipes here. We're going to talk about a formula to basically make any quiche you want. It starts with the egg base, and we're also going to talk about fillings and crust. Now, I borrowed the best recipes, ideas, techniques from all over the internet from cooks that are much better than I am. And I've used their insights to sort of create this Frankenstein of a formula. So our dough is largely inspired by famous French chef Jacques Pepin, and we're going to borrow some general technique and egg base from the guys over at Chef Steps too. But I did make a few tweaks of my own for sure. That's my, that's my, little, that's my little tweak knob mid-tweaks. Okay, let's jump right in. All right, so as stated, this video is going to be much more formulaic rather than sharing an exact recipe. The goal of this video is to make you feel comfortable making any quiche you'd like on your own, not necessarily like one exact type. And this formula begins with the crust. We are going to make a classic French short crust dough called pâte brisé. This dough will give us a crispy, flaky crust. Think of this as your all-purpose pie dough. Use it for pies, quiche, or other tarts, sweet or savory. When baking, it's important to be as precise as possible, so a solid practice is to weigh out your ingredients, it's definitely the most accurate way to do things. Add all the dry ingredients and the paddle attachment to the bowl of the stand mixer and place it in the freezer for 20 or so minutes until everything's ice cold. Don't add the water yet, that comes later, but put it in the fridge to chill until we're ready to use it. We need everything to be ice cold so the butter and flour properly meld. Room temperature butter would likely melt and ruin this whole process. It's best to work on a cold surface for this. I've recently fallen back in love with my stand mixer, but you can totally do this by hand too. Once your ingredients are icy as the dickens, pop in your mixing bowl and with the paddle attachment, mix on low to medium low until your butter and flour are inseparable lovers. This could take five to 10 minutes. Be patient with the step. You want something that resembles a coarse sand, but if a few medium clumps are sprinkled about, that's totally fine. When your stand mixer starts struggling or making noises like it's going to blow up, your dough is ready. But for serious, you just want to make sure you have a super smooth ball of dough. Dust your work surface with flour and plop out the chilled dough ball. We aren't really kneading here. Just form the dough into a puck or like an oversized hamburger patty shape. Cover with plastic wrap and chill in the fridge for at least two hours or better yet overnight. You can skip this part, but letting the dough rest will make it less likely to crack and split on you when you roll it out. Save yourself the mental breakdown, just let it rest. And by the magic of cinema, our dough is ready. Once again, toss some flour on your work surface, and as the great Ludacris once said, roll out. Straight from the fridge, the dough is tough, so tap and spin the dough to start the rolling process, and then proceed with the classic rolling technique. Roll the dough to about an eighth of an inch thick and check to see if your dough is rolled out enough. Place the dough over your baking dish of choice and gingerly work the crust into the mold. The more rested your dough, the less likely it is to break on you during this stage. I like to use the back of my rolling pin to press down the inside crease of the dough. From here, use a knife or kitchen scissors to cut off any excess dough. I don't roll the dough off the rim here because it tends to shrink and pull back during the next step. Once again, chill the prepared dough mold again for 30 minutes or do this ahead and chill overnight. Just cover with plastic wrap after an hour or so if you're making ahead. After our crust is chilled again, we're going to blind bake it, which basically just means pre-bake. We do this to give the crust a head start in the oven so it begins to cook through, allowing us to add liquids without leakage. Lay some foil over the top of the crust and fill it with pie weights, but if you're like me and don't have any pie weights, use beans. They work great too. Bake the crust at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 204 Celsius for 25 to 30 minutes, then remove the foil and finish the process for an additional 5 to 10 minutes until golden brown and practically begging to be filled. If your crust comes out like this, no worries. It'll flatten down in a few minutes and whatever remaining air is in there will be pressed out by the filling. Speaking of the filling, it's time for step two of the quiche form formula, the egg base. Essentially, we're making a neutral egg custard of sorts. For this egg base, mix the eggs, whole milk, heavy cream, and salt. You can totally use a whisk for this, but if you have one, an immersion or stick blender works even better. Not only is an immersion blender quicker, but it doesn't pump as much air into the egg base as a whisk would. Air bubbles could make your quiche unnecessarily poofy. Transfer the egg base to a resealable container. This recipe will make enough base for around two 9.5 by two inch tart pans. So cut the measurements in half if you'd only like to make one quiche. To showcase the technique, I'm going to make the world's most popular quiche, and that is quiche Lorraine, which is simply a quiche of leeks, bacon, and Gruyere cheese, but I added onions, and you can sub the Gruyere for Swiss if you'd like to. In the base itself goes a bit of thyme, nutmeg, and black pepper. Remember the base is already seasoned, so we don't have to add salt to it. Mix it around and give it a few sniffs for good measure. All right, so assemble the quiche by layering in the filling, followed by the cheese, and then lastly the egg base. I like adding the cheese after the filling because it allows for a nicer browned crust over the top of the whole quiche. 
pop the whole thing in a 350 degree Fahrenheit 176 Celsius oven for 40 to 60 minutes or until just set and barely jiggly in the middle. Let the quiche rest for at least 25 minutes. A cool quiche is much easier to work through and cut through than a hot one. And I don't know, I mean, I like my quiche at like room temperature personally. Using a sharp knife, slice away at the edge where the crust meets the tart pan. From there, the crust should either flake off on its own or be easy to remove. When the fat, in this case the butter, heats up during the baking process, steam is released which creates these little air pockets, leaving us with a mega flaky crust. And I mean, this crust is flakier than my 6th grade girlfriend on a Friday night. And that relationship did not last long, mostly because it didn't exist. Here's a neat little party trick for you. If you're using a tart pan with a removable bottom, when the quiche is cool, remove the mold using a cup like this. If you're a derp like me, this is actually super helpful. Once your quiche is out the mold, let it cool for another 10 minutes or so out of the pan. The longer the better. Just a couple of victory air guns because you asked for it, and now we are ready to slice. The sun was going down, so I felt pressured to cut into my quiche prematurely, but all things worked out. Just remember, the cooler the quiche, the easier it is to slice. You made it. Cut your quiche into as many slices as you want and munch. Oh, and I almost forgot, if you have them, make it rain chives. And though some of that b-roll made the quiche look a bit juicy, it came out super flaky, tender, and crisp, even the bottom. Here's a lone wolf shot of a slice of quiche after it was chilled down in the fridge, then sliced. Notice those layers between the filling and the edges. And I mean, I, I don't know, I guess I was just feeling the cross-section aura for this video. Cross-section vibes, brother. All right, so there you have it. Just remember to let your quiche fully bake through. If you think it's getting a little too much color and browning on the top, just cover it with a piece of foil. We really wanna make sure that the quiche filling and the actual crust is fully baked through, especially if you're using a thicker tart pan like I did. And to those of you still here, as always, thank you so much for watching. Pumping out these long form videos can be pretty exhausting at times, but at the end of the day, I have a blast making them and I have an even more fun time bringing you guys into my kitchen and messing around. So thank you so, so much. Y'all are beautiful. Stay that way. And remember, if you dig videos like this, subscribe for more. And if you like this video, like the video. If you don't like this video, don't like the video. But you should probably like the video. Please? And until next time, later.